Hey folks, you know, uh, with the passing of Florian Schneider a few weeks ago, uh, I was uh, prompted to come back down here into the studio, into the basement here, basement studio I guess you would call it, and dust off an old project that I had trying to uh, do my own version of Home Computer, one of my favorite Kraftwerk songs from many years ago. I've been listening to Kraftwerk since uh, about 1981 when the Computer World album came out. And I've always loved the sequences, the, the sequencer work in there. And I had tried to figure out the sequence that they use in the song Home Computer. And I could never quite figure it out to my satisfaction until recently. And I, I made sort of a little discovery, which I think some of you out there in your home studios will find interesting. You may, maybe you're not even you're in your home studio, some other studio, whatever you like. So the first question that I had was, what notes are they playing? What did they program into the sequencer to, to create the sound? Well, I tried playing the CD over and over and over, and I just couldn't get it because part of the uh, sequence sounds chromatic, other parts of it sound kind of like whole tones. I couldn't really tell. Now, in case you're wondering what sequence I'm talking about, uh, what I've done here, get out of the way here, looking at the camera. So I, I loaded the song onto my beloved 11-year-old MacBook Pro here, and I bought a copy of Amazing Slow Downer software, which is a great little tool. Uh, guitarists really like it, but it's good for everything. So uh, let me uh, turn the speed up here to 100%. Okay, so this is the sequence that I'm talking about. By the way, I have the computer plugged into a guitar amp, so I'm listening to that. So that goes by so fast it's really hard to, to figure out, but if you load it into the uh, slowdowner software, obviously you can slow it way down. And so that's what we do here. I'm going to take this speed. I'm going to turn it way down to 25% of normal. Now, what you can do is just play it slowly and listen and just try to figure it out a little bit more that way. Now, I know enough about synths, and most of you probably do too, to know that that sound that they're using with the sequencer is a sine wave. It's either sine or triangle, probably a sine wave. It's a mellow sound, doesn't have a lot of harmonics, so you can put a patch on your synth, whatever kind of synth you're using, and it's going to sound closer to what they're doing, which is going to make it easier to figure out what notes they're playing. So you play it back slowly, and it sounds really funky. Hear those top two notes? eventually figure out that those are the top two notes of the sequence. Hear that? It's A sharp and C sharp. That's very clear at the top. So then you just keep listening and just Through a process of elimination, I know those are the top two notes, and I start listening and just trying everything, and I finally figured out that what that sequence is is simply the black notes. 16 notes worth of black notes. So that's your top note. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So from C sharp to C sharp. It's just the black notes of the keyboard. But there's a little bit more to it than that. If you just listen to those notes, it's hard to grab what the pitch is because it seems to change and it's not very definite. The pitch, for me anyway, I, I had a hard time figuring out what notes they were, even when it was slowed down, I figured out that it's not just one note, it's an interval. You're actually hearing two notes. 
And if you listen closely, I don't know if you can pick it up. Those are in parallel. You can hear those notes at the top. Hear those notes? So after listening and listening and listening, I figured out that it is actually C sharp with the F below it. So if you go to the C, if you were to transpose the sequence down there, it would be C with the E below. But in this case... So, what it is, at the end of the day, is all the black notes of the keyboard with... I don't know what you would call that. I mean, it would be a third on top, but it's inverted. It's the third below the note. So what you do is, like, I have a sequential circuits, Prophet 12 here. It's very easy to do that with, with this uh, keyboard. That's a sine wave. Just uh, to do a patch, just have a sine wave with... that third below. Hear that? See? So that at the end of the day, it's just the black notes, sine wave with that interval. And that's what that sequence is. Now if you're thinking, that still doesn't quite sound right, well, remember that they've got a delay on there, so you're hearing the notes kind of adding up on each other in a way that you don't if you're just playing it this way. But um, so once you figure that out, there are a few ways you can take care of the problem if you want to play it yourself. You can uh, just program it in. If you have a workstation like this uh, Phantom, you can just program in a patch, sine waves, uh, that sixth apart or whatever. And, and I've been having a problem with this thing today. Uh, trying to do this demonstration. I think this thing has a software problem. Anyway, <clears throat> the volume keeps dropping on this patch for no reason at all, so I have to keep going back to studio set stuff. But anyway, you can program it in and just play. Like that. That's the easiest way, especially for me, since I'm programming the whole song, you can do it that way. Now, if you're if you're more of a keyboard player, and I'm my head's out of the shot now, you can you can try to play it manually. Some people could do it. Like that. Uh, a little rough on my part, because I'm not that great. But uh, keyboard. But there you go. Now, if you're wondering, when they do the sequence again in the later part of the song, uh, after the chorus or the, the verse, and they do it again, it's transposed up, and all it is is just a semitone higher. So instead of... It's just... That's all it is. It's just moved up a semitone. So that's how you could do it, playing it. Or programming it and I'm gonna take a little break here move the camera and I'll show you uh, the granddaddy of them all to do it with an analog sequencer all right so here we are with the modular setup and uh, this is my homemade 16 step sequencer and of course it's a it's a 16 step sequence so you just program in your pitch of all the black notes and then in my case, I have the CV out split between two different VCOs, in this case, uh, Blasset uh, VCOs, and going into an effects unit, which uh, everything you heard earlier was going through the effects unit with just a little bit of reverb on it. Uh, I'm going to play this completely clean, dry, clean and dry, whatever. Um, no reverb, no nothing, so you can hear the sequence by itself, uh, just with the... Um, the C, uh, the regular tuning, the unison tuning. OK. 
okay? So that's that one. Now I'm going to turn that down. And there's the other one. Tune that sixth apart. And leave that down and then turn up the unison. Okay, now add some reverb and delay and the magic happens. And I, I think this sounds, sounds pretty cool. And for reference, once again, Let's hear the original. Okay, and then the one that I created here. Not identical, but pretty darn close. And now the next thing to figure out is all the tricky drum patterns that go on uh, behind that sequence. Because, of course, anytime I play from the CD, it has the wonderful uh, backing rhythms in it. And that's going to be really tricky because so many of them are similar. And they're behind the musical sequence, so it's going to be a little bit of a task to get that figured out. But, hey, I think it'll be fun. And... Uh, and just to prove that it, it must be okay, it attracted the attention of Ruffs the cat. There she is. She she likes the sound of the sequencer too, so she came running. So if she says it's okay, it's got to be okay. All right, well, I hope you uh, found this rather long and winding road uh, somewhat interesting and uh, be looking for my complete take on home computer in the future. Over and out. <laughs>